Hey guys, James from Tidy Culture here. I just thought I'd let you know what I thought about the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Um, now, firstly, I have to say that I was a massive fan when I was younger. There was there was He-Man, there was Transformers, and then there was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for a long, long time. Um, it was really the first cultural phenomenon I really shared with other people. Um, now, despite the fact I was a mega fan when I was younger, I you know I went into this movie with low expectations, and they were exceeded just. Now, I'd like to think that even as a little kid, I knew how batshit crazy the concept of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was. I mean, it sounds like someone's just put words into a bowl and, and pulled out four at random and put them into a title. Um, you know, so we're not looking at Shakespeare here, but we are, I guess, we were, I was hoping that it would be better than the, 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 the movies in the early 90s, because they were just so dark and dour, and it was really that time when Hollywood was, ins you know, insistent on scaring the shit out of little kids and making kids' movies as dark as possible. Um, this film doesn't suffer from that. This film is a little bit lighter, a little bit more bouncy. Um, it's directed by Jonathan Leesman, who's best known for Wrath of the Titans and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning. So the, the, they didn't exactly set the world on fire. Um, probably more telling is the fact that it's produced by Michael Bay, and it comes with all the Michael Bay pitfalls and pratfalls that, uh, that he likes to bring to a movie. Now, I'm not a Michael Bay hater by any stretch of the imagination. I think that The Rock is one of the best action movies in the last 20 years, so that brought a lot of goodwill with me. Um, having said that, his recent run of films are definitely style over substance. If you look at the Transformer movies, that's basically just explosion after explosion. Now, this movie isn't quite so bad. It has its tongue a little bit more in its cheek and, and doesn't take itself as serious. The story is probably oversimplistic. It's, uh, there aren't really any strong beats. It really just goes from one situation to another, um, and there's no real development of any, any kind. So for those of you that don't know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles started off as a comic book and then became a very popular uh, cartoon series in the, uh, in the early 90s. Um, it was then preceded by a couple of films, um, and then also there's, there's been more recent reiterations, including you know, other, TV, other cartoons and, and other movies. In this film, Megan Fox stars as April O'Neil, who's looking into suspicious activities of the, the Foot Clan, which is a gang, uh, gang of mercenaries, I guess, um, who are doing criminal activities in New York. And part of her investigation leads her into discovering that there is a vigilante who, it turns out, are the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, now, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have been living in the sewers, um, and hence no one's seen them, but they've started to come out of their shell, so to speak, and are now starting to protect the city from this gang of mercenaries. Uh, one thing I will say for the movie is that uh, Megan Fox can carry a film. Um, not particularly well, but she does it. You know, she's not a great actress, she doesn't, she doesn't hit any dramatic heights with her acting, but, you know, she, she's feasible as the glue that holds the film together. What really let this film down for me was the, uh, the action. Um, you know, you go into a Michael Bay film expecting a lot of action, but unfortunately there wasn't enough to uh, really grip me, enough good action to really grip me. You know, I was excited to see some, you know, some well choreographed uh, fight scenes, even if they were, you know, just CG, but you really don't get that many good ninja scenes as such. Um, there is one fight scene between Shredder and Splinter that gets a pass mark, but it doesn't go over and above by any stretch of the imagination. All the other, all the other action in the movie, is very much like the uh, the action you would see in any Michael Bay film. You just very cluttered, um, over edited. You can't really see where everything is, and it's just um, you know just overly, overly over the top. And it's really hard to get a get a bearing on anything. It's very disorientating. Things going on over here, and then the camera will. Just shaky cam will go over here and it's just a bit of a mess and that that carries through to this to this film now another issue with the film is that the uh, the filmmakers decided to make the foot clan a gang of mercenaries armed with guns um, now that's i guess fair enough but then they made the ninja turtles you know invulnerable basically like bulletproof so what's the point of giving your you know your main bad guys uh, you know, guns, and then make the heroes bulletproof. It just kind of seemed that there was no tension because the turtles were invulnerable to bullets, so 
you know, there was no risk of them dying. Um, and that brings me to another point that the turtles just seemed so over the top strong, you know, in the cartoons, they were very much, you know, just regular strength turtles who had ninja abilities but in this movie they're just over the top strong they can they can do pretty much anything lift pretty much anything including shipping containers um and that just seemed you know a little bit unnecessary and it really you know made the threat of the bad guys you know extremely low shredder was done quite well um he did he did have a menacing presence about him and he you know, he led to some good fight scenes, but there was no character at all. He was just a very two-dimensional um, villain that just allowed the the good guys and the turtles um, someone to fight, basically someone you know big and badass. But at no point did you ever understand his um, his plan or really sympathise with him at all. And that's you know that's usually a very important thing when when it comes to villains. So overall, I guess the current me would say this is probably a two-star film. 12-year-old me would probably say this is a four-star film. So take that for what it's worth. You can trust whoever you want, current me or 12-year-old me. It's up to you. But certainly I would encourage you to make up your own mind. So go and see it if you if you get a chance. Um, you know, I'm as I said, I'm no less a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan than I was. Um, but I, I am hoping that one day they'll bring out a film of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that, that really sort of nails the whole thing and, and, you know, brings it all together. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll, um, I'll see you next time.